Hello and good evening. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we always have our fun team calls on Monday nights and sometimes we have guest speakers and we love to invite others to join us because one plexus and I love sharing stories of incredible people who are doing awesome things that are just normal people like us um, involved in ministry and all these things and Sarah is one of those people she just um, went emerald super recently it was so exciting to watch and so that was one of the reasons I jumped out and I was like Sarah you're my new friend can you please come share with us what happened um, Sarah and I got to connect at leaders retreat a couple of years ago we got to do these super embarrassing I am plexus videos and she helped me and I helped her not be nervous we were just doing that together so we got to connect because we're both in ministry and um, families doing that kind of a thing, and she's just wonderful. So I'm so excited for y'all to hear from her tonight. Um, there will be a recording that you can share with your teams, um, so no worries if they were not able to hop on, but definitely text them as we get started. There will be a Q&A session at the end, so if you have questions while Sarah's talking, um, you don't have to put them in the chat immediately, but maybe write them down. Um, that way they don't get lost in responses, and we can make sure that um, we've got some there at the end. Okie dokie. Well, let me turn it over to Sarah, and she's just going to tell us her story. I just sort of like, just tell us, honey, just tell us how, why, and how you started. It's just so encouraging to me to know there are so many different types of people that are being blessed by this, and that this opportunity truly is for everybody, it's not just for influencers, it's not just for that top two or three percent who's ready to like do the thing, it's for all of us, it's for the busy mamas and it's for um, the shy and for the extroverted, it's for everyone, so take it away, Sarah. Hey, thank you so much, Sally. I am incredibly honored that you would ask me to even do this, um, really is so sweet. Okay, so, um, I, <laughs> my story is a little funny. Um, let me go back to, um, I went to Harding University with a whole bunch of other people, you know, um, I was a freshman with Jessica Heffley, Ryan Evans, Beth Light. Um, I knew Carissa Casey's husband pretty well. Carissa was a little bit younger than me, so I didn't like, we didn't run in the same group. But, um, and, um, <laughs> and I was friends with just a couple of Jana Barnes, like several other jewels that are in Plexus. Um, and I actually met my husband at this university. So it's like a super conservative private Christian university. Um, and I remember <laughs> my husband and I, I think we'd been dating like a week, maybe, and he's like, um, if you want to be rich, um, you don't, you shouldn't marry me. And I was like, uh, <laughs> like, are we even talking about this? Like, really? Like, <laughs> like he just laid it out there. He was like, um, I'm not going to be rich. I don't want to be rich. I don't want, I'm not, I'm going into ministry. I have no idea what the Lord has for us or for me and whoever I choose to marry and whatever. And if, if you were looking for that sort of security, you're not going to get it from me. So just want to let you know. And I was like, okay, like really? Uh, oh, <laughs> and thus started the journey, the journey of, um, of being called into ministry, which I actually was already doing ministry work, um, before, but being called into this, what I thought meant that I had to be poor if I was going to serve the Lord. And, um, the, I don't, I don't know where that mentality kind of comes from. I, I'm not sure. And I haven't been able to pinpoint it, but I think Jessica Hefley knew that I had this mentality well before I even started, because I remember, even though I was best friends with Beth Light and Ryan Evans, because we roomed together in college and we were in each other's weddings. Um, I, Jessica had actually messaged me several times, cold messaged me about Plexus and like sent me videos of other preacher's wives. And I 
no joke, said to myself, well, I don't know what gospel they're reading, but they're not reading the same kind of gospel I am because those preacher's wives should not be doing this plexus business. Like, I legitimately thought that. I thought, well, Jessica's just, like, gone off the deep end. Like, I just really... <laughs> I really thought that I did not even listen to any of the messages. I did not, I did not watch the videos she sent me. I didn't do any of it. I don't think I still have ever read them or watched those videos. I still haven't done it. And um, it wasn't until I had baby number three when I was in the hospital that the doctors up here in Wisconsin were like, um, okay, you know, as we're checking you out and everything, make sure that when you go home, you have a good probiotic. And I thought, probiotic? It was like the first time I've ever really heard that word outside of Facebook posting. And then, um, you know, a couple hours later, the pediatrician comes in, checks out my child, you know, and is doing all those little visits and all the little checks for the baby before they send you home. And they said, and make sure you are on a good probiotic. And I thought, probiotic again, what is going on? And then we're going to our chiropractor and getting adjusted a few weeks later. And she's like, and are you on a good probiotic? And then I go to my physical therapist for all sorts of stuff. And, um, She's like, are you taking a good probiotic? And now I'm telling you, not a single one of these people were trying to sell me a particular probiotic. They just wanted me to get on one. They just felt like gut health is really important and you need to do this. And so I thought, I think my friend Ryan sells like some probiotics or something. And so I legitimately messaged Ryan Evans and said, okay, so I need to like talk to you about some probiotic thing. She legitimately signed me up as an ambassador, paid for my stuff, sent it to me, mailed it to me, and guess what? I didn't take it. She like sent me and my husband several months worth of products. She had just gone emerald. She was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to do this, yada, yada, yada. That was over three years ago. And I was struggling so much, so much with such postpartum depression and struggling just like, I mean, I was not, we were not doing well. Life was not doing well. And I was in Wisconsin. It was the dead of winter and it was dreary, dark, cold, all the things. And, um, and I, I just didn't touch the stuff. I just did not take it. It sat in my cupboard. I kept getting shipments. I think I threw away the welcome pack stuff. I actually know I did. Um, like I just didn't even, because I didn't, I, I didn't invest in it. I wasn't like, it was just given to me. I wasn't ready for it until I talked to one of my friends, Jessica Anderson, um, who is actually a Ruby with Plexus. And I was like, Hey Jess, you're doing some like Rodin and Fields or some other company. I don't know. I was like, and she was really struggling to make the money. And I thought you should not be doing that. You should do Plexus. I was like, I don't do Plexus, but my good friend, Ryan and Beth, they like make a lot of money and I'll, I'll just put you in touch with them. You should totally do Plexus. So I did that, just that. I put her in touch with Ryan and they introduced each other. They were chit chatting and Jessica wanted to work the business. And Ryan was like, well, I'm going to put her under you. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And she said, well, but you have to promise you're going to help her work the business. And I was like, I can't even function. Like I am in the pit of hell. Like I am struggling so much with postpartum depression. My baby isn't eating. Um, he's not gaining any weight. We are seriously on the struggle bus. Like I can hardly go pick up my child from school to keep calling me and saying, hello, are you coming today? And I'm like, Whoa! you know, like freaking out and just crying all the time. I mean, I was a hot mess. I was like, Ryan, this is not for me. I cannot do this. I am not going to do any of that jazz. I, I honestly didn't really know what it all entailed. I didn't, I just knew that it was more than I could handle. And so, um, <laughs> so Jessica Anderson got started and she went silver. And I remember seeing that silver announcement and thinking, what in the world? Are you kidding me? This girl, can, this girl just did that? 
Like she just did that. She just went silver. I, I told her to do that. Wait a second. What am I doing? This stuff maybe works. And so I literally got this stuff out of the cupboard March 15th, three years ago, and took my first pink drink. And three days later, I realized, holy cow, I haven't eaten any of the Girl Scout cookies and I'm actually feeling really good for the first time. Like I wanted to go running. Like I felt so good. I thought, oh my goodness. And guess what I did just impulsively because I am an impulsive person. I made my first Plexus post. I didn't even know what I was doing. All, I didn't even tell anybody I was going to do it. The girls had no idea. I just simply took a picture of the Girl Scout cookies that I had thrown away into the trash because I didn't need them anymore. And I said, look, I'm not needing this stuff anymore. Holy cow, I'm feeling so amazing. And that was how I started. It was more just like a on a whim kind of a thing. And I thought, oh, wow, that was that was really easy. That was really good. And I talked to my friend Beth and I was like, Beth, who at that time was my sponsor. Well, she had, that's a long story. Beth Light is my sponsor. So, um, she, <laughs> I was like, Beth, I'm going to run out of these products and I cannot afford to take them. Like I can't afford to buy them. Like we have to figure out how I have to, how I'm going to get these covered. Like I have to, I have to, because I cannot live without these anymore. And, um, and so she was like, okay, well let, let's talk about it. And we figured out, okay, this is what you would need to make. And this is the next time you're going to run out of your products. Right. And I was like, yep, that's when I'm going to run it out. And I remember circling the date on the calendar. And I told myself, you will have the money to order more products by that day. I was determined because I knew I needed them so badly and my husband was not going to put that into our budget. We were struggling as it was. We did not have any extra money in our budget to be buying something that I thought I needed, even if I did think I needed. It, it just wasn't there. And I am such a penny pincher that I don't like to spend money. And so, um, I just wasn't going to do it. And I realized at that point that one, this was fun. I liked a challenge and I didn't realize how much I liked to challenge until I challenged myself. But two, that when there's a big enough why, I'll do anything. That when I am determined and I set a goal date, that I will accomplish that goal. And that has carried me on through this whole process. Now, let me tell you, the first Sunday I showed up to church, I was having like heart palpitations. I am not kidding. I was so terrified of going into that church building because I had been posting on Facebook for the previous five days all about this plexus stuff. I was so scared my husband was going to lose his job. No joke. I thought, oh crap, my husband is the preacher. He is like the only person on staff, okay? This is Wisconsin, central Wisconsin, okay? We live in Wisconsin. This is, the churches are not big. They're not like these mega things. Like we used to live and work down in the Southeast. I know all about the Bible Belt, Bible Belt and all of that. This is not that, okay? So we're in a totally different culture up here. And I thought, oh no, oh no. Like we had not been at this church for very long. I honestly did not know what the support was gonna be like. And I am just like, like knots in my stomach, like, for, like just thinking, oh my goodness, please, Lord, I'm praying that they do not, like, like the elders do not come pull him aside and say, Tim Randolph, get a hold of your wife. Like, what is she doing? You cannot be trying to get income somewhere else. You could not be doing this. And my husband was really nervous about it too. Like, I remember him thinking, I don't know, Sarah. I don't know what these people are going to think about this. Like, I'm really leery about this, honey. And you know what was so amazing is 
the women's minister, um, she's like a volunteer, so she's not paid. She comes up to me on the stairs and says, hey, I think you and I need to talk. And I thought, oh no, <laughs> here it is. Oh no, here we go. She's like, I, I like your posting. I, I wanna know more about your probiotics. She was my first customer. And then one of the elder's wives comes up to me and says, you know, I've been taking Plexus for like two years and I love it, but I've been getting it from this girl I don't even know. And I have no idea who she is. I'd love to get it from you. I was like, okay, <laughs> sounds great, yeah, okay. And then another elder's wife came to me and did the same thing. And then people kept coming to me because I kept posting about it. Now, I know that this may not be the case for every church. I do not know the case for other churches, but I cannot tell you what a blessing it was for me to feel so supported in a moment that I wasn't sure it was they were going to support me. One, they were so supportive because they knew how much I was struggling before. My cup was so empty and I was scraping the bottom of that cup every single time I went to church. I was crying. I was like down in the nursery with my baby, not getting to even be in worship. You know, you know what it's like when you're just nursing that baby and you're nursing that baby and you're just caring for your kids and you're like, why am I even here? You know, I mean, it is hard enough getting to church with multiple children, doing it by yourself when your husband has left at six in the morning because he's got to be there doing it and knowing you are sitting in worship the whole time with your kids and it's just you, that is hard. Doing it when you have postpartum depression, that is like tearful. You can hardly even be there. You are in the nursery crying your eyes out. That's what you're doing. That is what it is like when you have the postpartum depression and you have a cup that is just dry. You can't tell anybody. You can't talk to them. You can't. There is, there's so much shame around it. I remember telling my husband finally one night he had been at Bible study and he came home on a Wednesday night and I was just bawling. I was like, you can never leave me alone with our children again. I am terrified. It, it wasn't, it wasn't that I wanted to shake my baby. Cause that's what I thought it was. I thought that's what postpartum depression was that you wanted, you didn't want anything to do with your baby. No, I didn't want anything to do with anybody else. I only wanted my baby and I wanted everybody else to leave me alone. And anytime I heard the word mom, I wanted to run for the hills because I only wanted one, my one baby. I didn't want my other children. I was completely, I mean, just mentally off you know? And when Plexus came into my life and I started getting my microbiome in balance, I started getting my blood sugars regulated. I saw a light at the end of the tunnel. I actually, like the clouds parted. Like I realized, wait a second, I'm not crazy after all. <laughs> like I'm exhausted. I have some hormonal things going on. And it's going to be okay. And when you have that kind of story, you cannot help but tell every single person you know, because you know it's going to change someone else's life too. And that is what was driving me, is that I knew that if I, who had never struggled with any of these things before with my other babies, could have this dramatic change, and even if somebody just had that dramatic change even now and then, even if I would have just had a really good day, maybe every other day or every three days, that would have been a game changer for me in of itself. But the fact that I just kept feeling better and I just kept feeling better and I kept feeling better and it was healing my family, I couldn't help but share that. That is something that you, how dare you not share? that I realized that is incredibly selfish. If I didn't, if I'm so worried about what other people are going to think, 
that I can't share this gift of hope? Well, shame on me if I was to do that. So I started doing some seven day trials and I, I never talk about Plexus at church. I would personally message or call or text um, different people. I would really post on Facebook the most, like just really post on Facebook at least three times a day. I would do one Plexus post, two non-Plexus or, you know, some sort of variety. I did not only do Plexus, but I made it real. I made it vulnerable every time. I was not fake. I was dead honest about my own struggles, my life, what was going on and how it had changed things for me. And people were drawn to that. People wanted to join that. They wanted to see what this was all about. So me posting about Plexus in these seven day trials, people were like, yeah, I'll do it. And they're like, well, just 20 bucks. That's great. And they started doing it. And I'm telling you the people that started at the beginning with me and on those trials and the people that go to our church, they're still with me. They're still my ambassadors. They are still going strong. This last month when I went Emerald, I had 40 level one ambassadors that were commission qualified, I guess you could say. And I'm telling you, I have people that have stayed around forever. They don't necessarily share on, on Facebook. They do share with their best friend. They'll, they'll like one or two people. Some of them are silver. Others just enjoy, enjoy the benefits, but I'm telling you those people from my congregation, those people have been such a huge blessing. And I really, I feel as though we've been able to keep a really good, like this is worship time. We are coming to church to worship. We are coming to church to pour into one another. We're coming to church to be, you know, to be fellowshipping. And a lot of times people bring up Plexus to me at church. And I just say, that is awesome. Like, let's talk later. Because I don't want it to be this, I'm here to talk to you only about Plexus because you happen to be taking Plexus products from me. No, I'm far more interested in our relationship and in, your spiritual health as well. Like I, I need, I want to know about that. I want to help you in that. And I want you to pour into me as well. So I know that this call is being directed towards a lot of other ministers, wives and people that are in ministry or missions. And so I get it. I get those feelings of how do you tiptoe around this? Like, how do you do that? Well, you just, you know, you just do it. You just do life. And yeah, Plexus is going to come up because it is part of your life. It's part of my life. I just had small group downstairs at my house and like only one of the families is taking Plexus from me in my small group. These are people I'm like doing life with and it, but they are still so supportive because it's my job. It's my career. This is something like I could tell them, hey, you know, we're, we're going to be cutting a little short tonight. I got to go upstairs and make sure I'm ready for this Zoom. Um, and they're good with that. They, they can totally accept it. It is something that they are proud of for me and they're happy for me. And I have just found so much love and support from all of these people because I make it I don't make every conversation about Plexus. You know what I mean? Does that, does this like ring true with anybody? I feel like I'm just talking to a mirror, you know, now you just kind of, Ooh, I just put it on the big view and now I'm seeing all the people. Whoa, it's a little crazy. Um, so anyway, that, um, so, okay. She, um, Sally wanted me to give a little bit of the timeline. So I went silver with my mom 
and my dad and one of the elders wives and my husband and um, my dad was a level two so that didn't really count does that make sense so really it was with my mom my husband and one of the elders wives um and that was like on week two and guys guys i think i posted every single day and nobody commented not anybody said anything until that one woman in the stairs at church i'm not kidding nobody commented nobody liked my posts for weeks but they were watching they were watching um they still yeah they still people don't comment or like unless they're in plexus but they're watching they were watching the whole time and i believe my first month i made like 417 dollars um i got several customers lots of new really lots of new ambassadors that first month and then may rolled around and i got zero not a single person joined my team not a single customer nothing and i was working it so hard oh my goodness i gave up tv at night i was talking about these seven day challenges i was like nobody i thought what in the world i had like seven new ambassadors last month not a single person no one everybody's telling me no nobody's responding and then in june I think I had 12, 12 people join me in June. Like it was nuts. There was these waves I learned to ride because as you're reaching out to people, you know, you're building those relationships. They're just sitting back and watching you. They're not quite ready. And then at the end of July, I went gold and um, that is when a big, a big change happened. Um, I pretty much went gold by myself. My mom had gone silver. She was my first silver. She did so good. She was so, so supportive. Um, and she is still so, so supportive. And I had um, a lady named Kathy Rabatoy um, that was talking to people too. But um, Ryan Evans told me, Sarah, okay, you're gold. You're not going to be able to get anywhere else by yourself. You have to recruit business builders. She said, I want you to make a hot 20 list. Your top people, your dream teamers, the people you want to go to Hawaii with, the people you want to do daily life with, the people that you love and respect, and I want you to write down their names, and then I want you to go and highly recruit them. And that's exactly what I did. I made a list of all the people that, and I was still kind of new to town. Um, I think we'd only lived here for a year and a half, maybe a year, yeah, about a year and a half. Um, and so I knew this girl named Krista who lived on the street from me, and I did the same thing with everybody. I called them up, I asked them to meet, meet up with me, and I said, I want to talk about Plexus with you. I was like really upfront with them. And I was just saying, you know, I just, like this may or may not be for you, but can we get together and chat about Plexus? Yeah, sure, okay. So we got together, and I just straight up told my friends, listen, this is what I love about you. And I gave them a list of the things that I absolutely loved about them because everybody loves to hear that, right? You gotta butter them up a little bit. And then I just would say, listen, I want to do life with you. I'm gonna do life with you anyway, whether or not you join me, but I will get to do so much more life with you because that means you're like my coworker, you know? Like, I wanna go on vacations with you. Like, I wanna do all the crazy fun things with you. So I'm highly recruiting you. So just so you know, um, and now let's talk about Plexus. And I just, I'm just really blunt. I'm really honest. And that way it just kind of gets it out there. And I say, we're going to take it as long as this takes for you to make a decision. But I want you to be fully informed before you make a decision. 
And so, you know, we just kind of talk about my story, their story, where they're at. And I simply ask them to dream. I even did this today. And I did invite my friend Robin over to this call. She's my neighbor. She wanted to talk to me about the business. And um, she's a newer friend of mine. And I just simply said, Robin, what would an extra $500 a month do for you? She was like, oh my goodness, Sarah, that would be amazing. Like an extra $500. And I knew she was thinking of all the things that she wasn't saying to me because that's kind of vulnerable, you know, but I knew she was adding it up. I knew she was thinking all the things that it would dramatically change for her and her husband. And she caught the vision and she even said, Sarah, I didn't realize I would be this interested. And, and I told her, I said, listen, you're not making any decision today. You're not ready. And, you know, and she had told me now I'm going to have to do some transcribing. I'm going to have to come up with the money first. And I was like, that is totally fine. Take as long as you want, because I want the timing to be right for you. And I was like, you're not buying anything today. You're just, you know, just sit tight. Let's talk. Let's do some research if you need to. Let's just keep doing this. Let's pray about it, you know, and just continue the relationship, continue this conversation. Let's leave it open-ended at this time. I don't like to rush people. I really like, I have just noticed that anytime I have somebody that just signs up like that, I've had some people just randomly call me and say, okay, I, I want what you have. Okay, what is it? How much is it? Okay. Hang up, they order it. And then in two weeks when it doesn't work, they're like, oh, this nothing works. I'm like, well, duh, you haven't even started on the Pro Bio 5. Of course it's nothing's working yet. You know, like you've given it two weeks. So I have realized to let people really get a grasp of this, be really ready to do this so that they will have the best results. And Krista signed up. She was one of those people. I had a couple of them that signed up for the business at that point for me, highly recruiting them. Remember, highly recruiting them. I like told them that. It's very flattering, I promise. And so, um, and she found Kim Yeager. Kim Yeager went enrolled with me, actually before me. She is my level two. She actually went enrolled just a few hours before I did. And if you don't know how that's possible, you need to learn the compensation plan. <laughs> so um, it is really, really neat. And I, I love that now I'm looking back at two and a half years ago when I told Krista about how I wanted to go on trips with her. Guess what we're doing next month? We're going to Waco, Texas, thanks to our upline on a Ruby retreat and getting to stay in the Magnolia bed and breakfast and all of that jazz. Like it is legitimate. You plant the seed and you see it happen. You actually see it happen. So, um, my journey was slow. I think, okay, so I went gold in July, December. I went senior gold. Ruby was in May. Senior Ruby was in August, and then I was at Senior Ruby for almost a year, like a year and a half, and that felt really discouraging, and I think at that point, I was thinking, God doesn't really want this for me. God is like, he doesn't want me to be rich. Like, he doesn't, like, I'm already rich. I live in America. I have my own bedroom. I'm not sleeping on the floor in a hut. I am rich already. Why should I think or ask for more? Like, that's stupid, Sarah. Like, you should not. Like, you're already a senior Ruby. You make a lot of extra money that you never intended on making. 
Like, Sarah, what in the world? Why would you ask for more? Like, how selfish, how self-centered, you know, God doesn't want this for me. This is not what he's really planning. Um, I grew up in a trailer park, guys. Like, no joke. I, like, my husband and I, we were on WIC with our babies. Like, well, not maybe at WIC. We were on food stamps. I Maybe we were on WIC. I don't remember. I think it was WIC. Yes. Like, I, I don't need... I don't need to do that. I, I don't, I, I just need to have a really poor car, like a car that just probably doesn't start all the time. I need, you know, um, my clothes, you know, we're just, we don't, we don't go clothes shopping. Like we just need to live paycheck to paycheck. And that's just what happens. Right. And, um, and that's just the way life is going to be. Right. And that's just what, that's what God wants from me. Um, because we have decided to be working for him and the church just doesn't pay that much. And, you know, we went to a really expensive school because that's what you have to do to become a preacher. You have to go to a school that leaves you with $60,000 of student loan debt and no way to ever repay it. That's, that's, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Like God doesn't want this for me. Um, we're going to be humble, right? We're, we're going to be um, humble and content. That is the word, right? We're not going to wish for more. We're not going to do that until last month. I don't know why it took me so stinking long because guys, I could have had Emerald forever ago. I held myself back 100%. I I was too scared. You go Emerald and you have more money. And what do you do with that? You go Emerald, like what if you try and you fail? What if you get really close and you realize you're really just not that great and you're not gonna make it? Or people don't really wanna support you that much. They're not gonna show up for you. Or it's just not meant to be, Sarah. Why even try? In October, I finished at a thousand pay points. In November, I finished at 1,200 pay points. December, I knew was going to be a wash. We were going to pretend December did not even happen. I think I finished at 1050, like 1,050. You need 1,500 pay points to go Emerald. So think about that. Jessica Heffley told me I was nuts to do it. She was like, no, you don't need to do that. Like, she's like, you could do it, but it's going to take a lot of work. And I don't know if you're up to it. Well, that kind of like lit a fire under me because it kind of pissed me off and I get a little fiery. I think she probably told me that to light a fire under me because she knows that about me. I don't know. But um, I was just like, yeah, well, I'm not going to talk to her. And I just simply like didn't message her the rest of the month because <laughs> I was so angry about it. I was like, oh, I'm so bad at you. And I even, and Ryan Evans was like, Sarah. Are you kidding me? Like, you're going to go for it? And I messaged Beth, who is in between us. It's like Ryan Evans, Beth White, then me. And I told Beth, I said, Beth, I ain't having it. No, no negativity whatsoever. You keep every person away from me. I just said, no, we're done. I don't want to hear anything anyone has to say unless they're positive. I even remember some of my family members were like, are you sure you're going to do it? Like, really? Like, you need how many more people? Who? Like, legit. I am not kidding you. Like, my closest of friends were like, I don't know, Sarah. And I just, honestly, I was like, well, doggone it. I'm just going to do this. 
I'm really tired of what everyone else is saying and what they think that I can do. And I'm tired of myself holding myself back and not believing that I can do it. And I simply visualized it like crazy. You have no idea. Like when you just decide, I'm going to do this, this is happening, you just make it happen. Like you just say, I am going to be doing this. I had this number, I don't even know, I threw it away now, I shouldn't have thrown it away. I had a dream board just right over here on the side of my desk and it had the number 1550 on it. And I had printed it off and I knew like 1550 pay points is what I wanted to end at when I went Emerald, the month I went. I think I printed that like a year and a half ago, okay? And I've been looking at it every day since then. And I had visualized that number in my back office. I had visualized me walking across the stage at convention. I haven't done that yet, but I will. I had visualized like my graphic, like I totally knew what my graphic was going to look like. Like I had it all planned out in my head. Like I had everything planned out to a T in my head. And then I just let it be there. And I like visualized the date. It was going to be January 31st, just like that first time that I decided I was going to have my products paid for. I circled that date and I knew it was going to happen because I was not going to try again the next month. I was not going to do it. I was determined. I was like, I have to have this. We have been through such a hard time in our marriage and in our family in the last six months that we had to have this. We have to have this. When you have to have it, there is no other option. You just make it happen, right? You need food, you just make it happen. You need clothes, you just make it happen. Whatever your need is, you go and do it. It's unbelievable. When you have to birth a baby, you know, like, you know, all these women, you know about birthing babies. You got a baby in your belly, you're getting labored. You're like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want another baby. And you're like, oh, I can't do this. Well, it's coming up whether or not you want it to. You're going to have to push. You're going to have to do it. You just have to do it. You have to do the stuff. You have to put everything else aside and say, you know what? That's not as important as this is. This is my dream. This is what my family needs right now. So I'm going to put everything else aside that doesn't need to be addressed right now, that I can put on the back burner right now and do this. This is what I'm going to do for my family. And that's what I did. And I just told everybody else to go away in my head. That was very nice, but I just, I simply did not have time for anything else but what was going to accomplish the goal. And I did it. I just, I decided, okay, I'm going to go live. I'm going to tell everybody about it. And I had people calling me and said, I want to be a part of this. I was vulnerable. I made a post. I kept making the post. I don't know if you guys saw this. I don't know who all is my Facebook friends or not, but I made a post and I wrote down how many more people I needed to go Emerald. And I put 55. And then whenever it changed a you know, somewhat significant amount, I would post another picture, post another picture, post another picture. And I kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And guess what? People showed up. It happened because I knew it would. The day of, I think I still have like 20 people. I had basically to go gold. I had to go gold in one day. I woke up. I put on my Plexus t-shirt that said, today is the day. Like totally put that t-shirt on, wore it the whole day. I, we had a snow day. I, I think it was like negative 50 wind chill, not joking, no schools, all the businesses were closed. I drove to Kim Yeager's house. Ryan Evans came over. We had a billion children. I asked my mom to come and help and watch all the kids while Kim and I just like zoned in and went emerald. We just knew we had to do it. So we sat down. We put our computers right by beside each other. and We were on our phones all day. 
doing it, making it happen. And I think by two o'clock I was enrolled. I mean, it just, and guess what? This is the, this is what I get really excited about. You know, that number of 1550, I hit it. I got 1556. It was amazing. I ended the month with 1556. I even beat what I was planning and what I wanted because I decided to do it. The only person that's holding you back is yourself. God has opened up this door for you. It is your choice if you want to walk through or not. He has given you this opportunity and you can decide what you want to do with it. God doesn't care. I mean, he's going to use you however rich or poor you are. He is going to use you. And you know what? God gives you gifts. And depending on how you use them is how many more he's going to bless you with. And when I'm talking about gifts and blessing, I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about you and the way that God made you and your story and the way that he has empowered you, the skills that he has given you, the life that he has given you. That are, those are the gifts. That is what you have to be a good steward of. And when he opens up a door for you, you better be a good steward of that door. You do it. You do whatever you have to do for your family. You do it for the Lord because you are going to be a good steward. And that is what you do. You don't do it because you just want a billion dollars. Guys, I just went Emerald and I'm still shopping at Goodwill. I went and got new tennis shoes because I needed some new tennis shoes. I didn't want to spend real money on it. I found a pair of on, on the clearance aisle at Goodwill. I was like, hot diggity dog. I got some new tennis shoes. I don't care that they're used. I mean, I just really needed some. You know, it's not about the money. I don't care about name brands. I don't even know what I'm going to look like in Maui because girls, I don't know anything about luxury anything. I do not know. Like, my nails look horrible. I have, like, nail polish on there from, like, three months ago. Like, not joking. Like, I am not all fancy at all. And I think, honestly, when we are vulnerable and we are just real with people about that, they appreciate it even more. They love that. They want to be around that because they can relate to that. How, how many of us know what Louis Vuitton purses cost or what they, what's the cool one or not? I don't know and I don't care. I just don't care about that kind of stuff. I just want my kids to go play hockey. I want to be able to put groceries on the table. I want to be able to feed us and clothe us. And I want to be out of those student loan debts. That is what I want. That's what I want. I want my husband to be able to do whatever he wants to do. If he needs to cut back on hours, I want to be able to let him do that. I want our cups to be full. I want my relationship with God to be where it needs to be. That is what I'm worried about. That is what I'm consumed about. I want my children and my boys to see their mama crush goals. Like that, holy cow. That is like crazy awesome to have my children there when I went Emerald and they were cheering for us. Like, makes me want to cry because I want my boys to see what they can do and the kind of women that they, I want them to marry. I want them to marry a woman who is strong and will encourage them to chase after their dreams and, and that will chase after their own dreams. That's what I want for my children. And so I'm going to be that person for them. I'm going to set those examples for them because that is important. So, sorry, I'm like getting on a, oh my goodness, what time is it, Sally? I'm so excited. It doesn't even matter. Oh, it's so good. You are so good. I don't even know what's going on on the side. I keep seeing all these little words. I'm like, not even. There's a bunch of like, yes, girl, preach, get it. <laughs> okay, I'm like totally gonna, I'm like so embarrassed. 
<laughs> don't be. It was so wonderful. This is reality, and this is exactly what you're telling us. Like we're all like so loving every second of it because this is your heart. And you guys, if you take anything away, maybe you're not in ministry. Maybe like these things that she's passionate about aren't. You share your passions. Do you hear what it sounds like to hear someone's heart like beating out of their chest? That is what God can use in each one of us. You may have a different message. You may have a different method. But this is what's important is that you find what makes you passionate and what God can use of yours, your skills that he has gifted you with, and you do the same thing. Um, does anybody have any questions? I think that was like a slam dunk home run. Any other sports terminologies? It was all of those things. Um, we had like one or two questions, but I think they completely got answered. You just, you just. Oh, I did. Sorry. No, they were sent privately, so we didn't. See them. Um, but does anybody have anything else before we hop off for the evening and just like? process all of that goodness and play over ourselves and our families you guys personal growth is real she's exactly right like even myself like here i am sitting here like yes like all of the things um can you talk a little bit about reaching for a goal with your downline reaching oh yes i was completely honest with them there's all sorts of um i don't know if that's what you mean but there's a lot of like debate. Do you tell your downline you're going for Emerald? Do you not? Um, I have one of my downlines, Lori Felton on here. Can you wave Lori? She's one of my level ones down in uh, Georgia. Um, you're in Georgia? She, yeah, she lives in Columbus. Well, actually she's in Phoenix City, Alabama, but that's basically Columbus, Georgia. Like it's the same. Yes. So, um, she, um, yeah, I was completely honest. When I was going for a thousand pay points, I told my team, I said, guys, I have a really big, huge goal. I want to, I want to hit a thousand pay points. The next month at the beginning of the month, I set that goal. And in my thread, I told them, I want to hit 12. I want us to hit 1200 pay points. Like I was honest, really, but that is just me. And I am really like honest and I don't know. I don't know how to keep things to myself. <laughs> like, I'm really bad at that. I just, things just like come out of my mouth. No, I feel like that's so good. I feel like it's important because I think for all of us who are working this business seriously, there's a, there's a level of wanting to know what it actually looks like. We want to know that you're setting goals and striving and reaching for things and that like that makes it more real for your downline to see you doing that. I know that was how it was for me when my uplines were reaching for goals. Like I'm like, I know, but how many points are you actually at? Like I need to know this because I'm going to be there one day and I want to see it happen. Yeah. Um, and I think it's too like that whole thing of like filling your bank, you know, like you have to be depositing into people. Like don't be distant and then just show up and be like, oh, by the way, I need you guys to help me to raise 1,200 pay points. You know what I mean? Like clearly she's talked this whole time about how she's been creating relationships and, and all of this within her team and, and stewarding those people well. So I think it's it's definitely a give and a take for that. Um, Molly, I want to say that that is pure head trash, friend. You said, I feel like they might say, so what? Good for you. That is not how they do it. I, I mean, I did, I do understand that. And I think I did feel that like, Oh, but if you tell them like, listen, when, when your sponsor becomes an Emerald, it like opens up the gate to corporate. You like, seriously, I want to be able to go to that training up in Phoenix so that I can get more and know more and then pass it on to all of my team. I want to be able to have special seating at convention so they can come and sit with me. Like I want, I want these things because I want, and I know that if I don't do it, they won't. They need to see me reaching. And I tell them, you need to see me reaching for ridiculous goals, going from a thousand pay points to 1200 pay points in one month when we really didn't add that many before 
is a big deal. And I wanted them to see me reach for a stupid, scary goal. And so what if I failed? We'll reach for it again. You know, like it's so important for them to be part of all of it. I think, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Yes. That's um, really good. The nuts and bolts. Okay. If you want to stay around for that, I, I do have to be off on this call in like two minutes because I'm you're actually supposed to be on another call. Yep, you're great. I do have, I did have a very smart system for actually getting those 55 people that is probably different than what anyone ever thought of because I've never heard of anyone else doing this. When somebody wanted to help me out, but they couldn't financially do the 199 welcome pack and give me those five pay points. I asked them to get one product and I put them as a customer under somebody else to give me those pay points. Does that make sense? Like didn't do it maybe the right way, but I made them a preferred customer, canceled their subscription right away. And that way, if they do want to reorder that product this month, I will re-sign them up as my customer. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's how I kind of wiggled and got that 55 because some people, you know, when you have those low hanging fruit of just 75 PV people, well, you just need a small product to bump them up to a hundred. I do not recommend doing that for all, all sorts of things, but for going for a big goal like this, it was a really good idea. <laughs> that's good. Um, let's say last question before you hop off is uh, just about how many people do you actually have working the business underneath you? I know a lot of people might think like you have to have all of these people helping you, but for some teams, it looks really different. It, it does. Every team is really different. Um, my outside legs, I do not have a crazy strong, like I had to work really hard to get 375 points on my outside legs. Like that's what was like, I had to work really hard for. Um, Cause I think the month before I finally hit 300, like, like in November I hit 300 on my outside legs and you need 375. Um, I have like Lori Felton, who is a super silver. I have Kathy Rabatoy, super silver. I have my mom who is a silver and maybe one or two others that might be silvers or not quite. So that's not that many. Those are my level ones. And then I have Krista who didn't want the business signed up Kim Yeager. Kim Yeager is a, a Emerald. And then I have, she has a level one that is like super close to Emerald. So like I've got, I do have a lot of business builders, but they are like thought levels five, six, and seven. Does that make any sense? They're like really far removed. So I don't get a lot of pay points from them. Um, a good, a good video for more expounding on this. Cause I know Sarah has to go is Melissa Eichenhorst. Who's your number 76. Have, if you guys have not seen that video, it's super good. Um, that's just on YouTube. You can search Melissa Eichenhorst. Use your number 76. Um, Sarah, thank you yeah. so much. It was amazing. It was inspirational. I think it's what so many of us just needed to hear from our hearts is like, it's okay that it looks different. It's okay if you're not fancy and all of these things. And that poverty mindset is real, especially in those of us in ministry. Um, and that it's okay. <laughs> and we can work through that. Um, God can use us. I love what you said. God can use us when we don't have a lot of money or if we do. Um, and sometimes he can use us in very different ways that we never expected. Thank you so much. I will post the recording and I will share it on Jessica Heffley's post from today as well. Um, that way you guys can copy it and share it into your other team threads. Good night. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.